right. Uh, so, so, you know, when you're uh, sitting at home and you realize that uh, a lot of what you see in a horror movie is uh, actually what you see at work. <laughs> so uh, then you get this wacky idea of making the correlations clearer, and that's what I'm trying to do over here, is trying to correlate demonic possession with ransomware. And, uh, you know, my goal is by the end of this, you won't think that I need help. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, we watch a horror movie, and then I correlate it with what I, what I do at work, which is ransomware analysis. So uh, ransomware, as we all know, is a malevolent uh, software or malicious software that enters your computer and encrypts your files and then demands a ransom. Um, but uh, without further ado, let's jump right into the primary elements that make up a ransomware. So the first thing, just like demons are always looking to possess vulnerable hosts, uh, ransomware is looking to infect vulnerable hosts as well. So this would be uh, vulnerability over here would be that one, you know, there's a few employees in your office, no matter, how, no matter how many security awareness and training sessions you make them sit through, they will always click on that invoice.exe that they get as an email attachment. So uh, that's a vulnerability, uh, vulnerability. And then another one would be, let's say, somebody who doesn't update their computer uh, frequently. So, you know, that's uh, the ransomware saying, hey, mind if I come in and encrypt a few files? And your computer goes, yeah, yeah, come right in. Um, all right, so now the ransomware is inside the machine. Now we need certain material to perform the demonic ritual. So now, uh, in terms of ransomware, what ransomware needs is a unique encryption key. Uh, so it needs this key to encrypt your files. So now, uh, at this point, your crypto API jumps in and goes, well, say no more. Here's a unique randomly generated encryption key for you. Encrypt away. And the crypto API exists on your computer because it's uh, able to provide a layer, a layer of abstraction for cryptographers if you're trying to perform a cryptographic activity. All right, so now you have a unique encryption key. Now you can actually go ahead and perform the ritual. But uh, ransomware is kind of picky about which files it encrypts. So it will encrypt the data files, but it will leave the system files untouched. This is, think of it this way, if uh, in, a, in a horror movie, if the, if the demon, once it possesses the host, kills the host immediately, then there is no movie. So, <laughs> so what you want is some drama. Demons love drama, right? So there's no point for theatrics if you just directly kill the host. On the other hand, if you can do this, then there's a lot of points for theatrics there. So ransomware likes to uh, make sure that it doesn't kill your system and uh, leave your use of the system to make the ransom payment. So they usually set up some form of channel of payment uh, using some form of cryptocurrencies. And uh, with that, let's do a crash course really quickly on symmetric and asymmetric encryption. This will help us understand uh, what ransomware is really doing. All right, so uh, you've got your happy, healthy host, and then uh, you're a malevolent entity who wants to turn the happy, healthy host into that. So uh, what you do is you say a secret incantation that only you know, uh, and this, is, this we'll call a symmetric key, and this you'll keep as, as a secret uh, that uh, you'll tell nobody. And now this key can turn uh, the, from a happy, healthy host to that. So this key can be used for encrypting uh, users' files. So now it's called a symmetric key because you have to keep the key a secret uh, because the same key that is used for encryption is also used for decryption. Uh, by the way, this is the, the pinnacle of my graphic design ability. So, uh, and this, so, so then we have symmetric encryption. With asymmetric encryption, uh, we have a public key. So you use the public key for encryption, but then uh, you have a mathematically related private key that you use for decryption. And you keep the private key secret with you at all times. It never leaves you. Uh, and the idea is that anybody can encrypt using your public key, but only you can decrypt using the mathematically related private key. So that's asymmetric encryption. So uh, ransomware uh, likes to use a, hi a hybrid approach. Uh, both of these have their advantages. Uh, symmetric encryption offers uh, fast bulk file encryption, so they'll use a symmetric key to encrypt your files. Asymmetric encryption, on the other hand, uh, is, provides a lot of flexibility. Your private key never leaves you. It's very secure. So uh, jumping out of the dark world for a little bit, uh, this is uh, something we presented in a paper we wrote, which was uh, on key management and crypto systems used in ransomware. So basically what they do is that they generate a symmetric key on your, on your machine using your crypto API, let's say, 
and then uh, they'll use that symmetric encryption, uh, encryption key to encrypt your files, and that symmetric key is encrypted using the attacker's public key that came embedded with the ransomware. So uh, you can read the details of that in our paper. You'll see that I usually avoid making correlations between demonic possession and, uh, uh, and ransomware in my academic papers. <laughs> so, so what does the day uh, in the life of a malware analyst looks like? So first of all, uh, just like demons don't like exorcists, uh, ransomware developers don't like malware analysts, so they try to make our lives hard. Uh, even if, so in this particular case, this is a rare instance of a PHP malware where we can actually see the code because it was written in PHP because it was meant to execute on servers. So we can actually see the code, which is pretty rare. But we can't really see the code right now because they've obfuscated it. So no matter how much of, a, how lead of a hacker you are, you can't really read that unless you de-obfuscate it. So you go through a, a, a set of uh, tri uh, tricks and techniques to de-obfuscate the code until you can, then you prettify a little bit so you can actually have some readable source code. All right, so that's good. Um, now, in this particular variant, which is meant to encrypt files on a server, this is a key generation procedure that they used. So uh, now remember, this is the symmetric key that they're generating to encrypt your files. Now the secrecy of this key is paramount to their ransomware operation. And look at the way they generated the key. All right, so you, then you've got key one, two, three, and four. Key one is just document root. So if I execute this on my virtual machine, I'll get, uh, I'll get this. And uh, key two is just the server name, which is the IP address of, uh, of my virtual machine, you know, the private IP. Key three, it, it concatenates all of that with some random letters in there, and then uses date one, uh, two, and three, all three the same date, but in different formats. Uh, now key four, it uses all of this and then combines it with a static string encoded in there and then goes through a process of hashing and encoding a bunch of times and then selects a substring of 25 characters. Now this is incredibly stupid because, <laughs> because the key is supposed to be secret and this procedure should not be repeatable. If I can read that and repeat that, the only thing that's kind of ephemeral in there is the actual date, which is not that ephemeral. I can predict what that was because based on when you started seeing the ransomware activity, I know what date it was, and so I can reproduce the key, and if I can do that, then why would you pay the ransom? So then, um, so this is a perfect example of a, of a, a script kitty attacker who's basically uh, puts on an anonymous mask in their mom's basement and is now bragging about their elite hacker skills on a Discord server, let's say. So, <laughs> not, not a great example of what a, a, a actual ransomware uh, you know, advanced ransomware uh, look like. So, uh, but, all right, so let's take another example of uh, a new ransomware variant. This one is more effective. This one, uh, what it does is it takes uh, files and then, okay, so this is a test file I created. It says, hello, bang, bang, con west, and that's the hex corresponding to it. Now, you execute on the system. It, changed, uh, it changes the file name to lock.bangbangcon, and of course, if you open it in Notepad, now it's got gibberish in there. So, uh, okay, well, we look at the hex again, and sure enough, yes, the, it's encrypted. Now, uh, what you want to see is basically what dependencies does this ransomware have? So, you look at all the DLLs that it's trying to import on your system. Uh, this is, it, uh, so for example, it will use the kernel32.dll to kind of move through the files on your, on your uh, computer, and it will use the crypto API comes in where it, uh, where it demands the crypto functionality. So it uses the uh, advanced API 32.dll to demand the crypto functionality so it can encrypt the files, generate uh, you know, uh, an encryption key and all that. So uh, we look at some other signs of, uh, of activity. So these are, these are the registry uh, keys that it changed on our system. Uh, so at this we're at that point in the movie where uh, you, know, you start to see that the cross is getting inverted in the, in the possessed victim's room and all of that. So we're seeing signs of some sort of uh, malicious activity. So what we see over here is trying to uh, modify a registry entry where, uh, uh, to mess with the security settings on your computer. In the next, uh, in the next part, it's trying to execute uh, notepad++.exe, which is actually a malicious app. So uh, next, it tries to create the ransom node. It drops the, ransom, uh, ransomware, uh, the ransom node on your computer and then it deletes uh, your shadow files. So shadow files, uh, VSS ex exists on Windows to keep uh, copies or backups of your files continuously. What it does is it goes through, uh, it goes to VSS admin and deletes all of the shadow uh, copies this, so that you can, you can back up. Then they've got more of a leverage because now you can back up, uh, because now you've got no backup. 
So, uh, so let's try to piece what we're trying to piece the puzzle together right now. And the next thing we want to do is try to look at the static assembly. So at this point, we're using a disassembler to look at the assembly because most of the times, like I said, we have a finished binary, but we don't really have the source code. So all we can do is read the assembly code. And so I've simplified it uh, a lot over here, but you usually have to uh, read uh, a lot of what the functions are doing and try to understand and then rename them. So for example, this function wasn't called generate AES key. I renamed it so that we can kind of get the whole picture. So it acquires a crypto context, generates the AES or symmetric key, and then encrypts the file using that key, then shows you the ransom message, d destroys that key from memory so you can't recover it, and then releases the crypto context. This is saying goodbye to the crypto API on your computer. So this is uh, generally the, the procedure that they go through uh, in an effective uh, hybrid ransomware crypto system. Uh, we also do some dynamic analysis to further understand what the ransomware is doing. For example, over here, uh, what I'm showing is, uh, is a debugger, and I, I can set breakpoints to kind of see what, uh, what it is like, uh, what it's doing in memory. So uh, over here, I set the breakpoint where it's right after it generated the symmetric key, so I can kind of see the symmetric key loaded in memory. So, okay, we, we kind of understand what the ransomware is doing now a little better. So you know how they talk about the, 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 ten, uh, uh, the nine circles of hell? Well, actually, there should be 10, considering we're in a digital age when we have the deep web. So that's the 10th circle. Now, uh, on the deep web, that's where they have uh, markets where you can buy and sell a lot of malware, ransomware, things of that nature. So Alpha Bay and Hansa Market were the two biggest uh, dark markets on the, under, uh, in the underground. And uh, they were both fortunately taken down by uh, law enforcement agencies recently. Uh, but a new market called Empire Market is trying to fill the void right now. Um, and uh, a typical example of what you'll see on these, uh, on these dark markets is something like this. They, on the forums, they'll try to, so they have a very structured market where they try to advertise uh, the features uh, and the bells and whistles on their ransomware. And uh, they have, so you can, so not everybody has the ability to, to develop a ransomware effectively. So they are what we call ransomware operators and ransomware developers. The operators uh, buy the ransomware from the developers and uh, you can either pay up front the whole price and buy the whole ransomware, or you can enter an affiliate program where you give them 30% uh, of your generated income from the victims, and then, you know, so there's payment options. So uh, if you're trying to get on the dark web, by the way, if you're curious and you're trying to access this dark market, you know, the, the onion router is the way to do that. You'll notice that this is an onion link. Uh, although I must warn you, you know, the contents of the dark web, one scene cannot be unseen. So, uh, you know, Cue ominous music. And uh, all right, so in conclusion, imagine this. You're the shaman in your local village, and uh, you uh, want to exercise demons, but uh, you have no customers because no one is getting possessed. So, so what do you do? You say some secret incantations. You invoke demonic spirits into people. Now you've got a whole line of people. Um, and uh, so that's what ransomware actually does. It's, it, it creates a problem that only they can solve. Uh, and they sell you that unique decryption key that they have and, uh, and that's, the, uh, that's, how, that's how it works. Uh, and that's all I've got for you today. Thank you very much.